Now, did you think that there was a snowball's chance that you would get away without hearing me talking about Maya Forstatter's case uh, tonight, the case that we've all heard about in the last couple of days? Um, I just want to run through it and, and have a little chat about the legal reasoning behind the judgment, which has proven to be, well, fairly controversial, but from a legal point of view, uh, fairly uncontroversial and reinstating common sense. So Maya Forstatter is a woman who believes that sex is a biological fact, that sex is binary, male or female. People are either biologically male or female, and people can't change their sex either through declaring they're the opposite sex or gender, by transitioning medically or by getting a gender recognition certificate. A few years ago, she sent some tweets out saying that, and it was picked up by work colleagues who complained that she was transphobic. She said she wasn't. She said she'd call a trans person by their chosen gender out of courtesy. But she also said she couldn't be forced to believe that a trans woman really was a woman. And she said that she wasn't obliged to say that she believed a trans woman was really a woman. When her consultancy contract came up for renewal, it wasn't renewed. And she said her beliefs, they're known as gender critical beliefs, were protected philosophical beliefs under the Equality Act. And she said she'd been dismissed because of those protected philosophical beliefs, which is against the law. An employment tribunal decided that her beliefs were not protected and so she couldn't claim. There are five hurdles under the law that a belief has to get over to qualify as a protected philosophical belief. She ticked four of the boxes, but she fell at the fifth one, which is that the belief has to be, and I quote here, has to be worthy of respect in a democratic society. The judge said, and this time I'm paraphrasing, the judge said that anti-trans views are wrong in modern society and not worthy of respect. And because they're not worthy of respect, they don't qualify for legal protection. Now, she wasn't happy with that decision and she appealed. And the case we've all been hearing about this week was her appeal from that decision. And as you probably know, she won. The Employment Appeal Tribunal said that her beliefs were worthy of respect in a democratic society. And the court was very clear to say it wasn't deciding whether her views were right or wrong, only that it was recognising her views as shared by a sizable number of the population and that trans persons who don't have a gender recognition certificate are still legally regarded as being the sex of their birth. Now, although there's scientific evidence that differs from Miss Forstatter's views, that didn't mean her views weren't worthy of respect. And the Employment Appeal Tribunal was very clear that the threshold for this fifth hurdle, the worthy of respect in a democratic society hurdle, was set very, very low. And it was only meant to exclude the most extreme beliefs, such as Nazism or totalitarianism. Now, there are two points I want to make arising from this judgment. First of all, the Employment Appeal Tribunal also made it very clear that those with gender-critical beliefs can't misgender trans people with impunity. Employers and service providers can and must still provide a safe environment for trans persons and for those who have undergone uh, a gender transformation process. Employers will continue to be liable for acts of harassment and discrimination against trans persons that are committed in the course of employment, as indeed will any individuals who commit acts of harassment. To put that another way, although an employer can't discipline or dismiss someone for holding gender critical views, an employer can discipline or dismiss someone for manifesting those views in an offensive way, for example, by misgendering their work colleagues. That's the first point. The second point I want to make is that this doesn't mean that Miss Forstatter wins her case. She's won the first battle. She hasn't won the war. She's still got to show that her consultancy contract wasn't renewed because of her gender critical views. So if the employer is saying, for example, her contract wasn't renewed because of poor performance or because they'd run out of work for her or because colleagues didn't want to work with her. And I don't know if they're saying that or not. We haven't had the, the next hearing yet. 
But if the employer is saying that, she's going to have to persuade an employment tribunal that the employer is wrong or unreasonable or not telling the truth. That's a battle for another day. She's won at the first hurdle. She hasn't yet won the war. It's a really interesting legal position, but of course... uh, on the ground in real life. It's something that's of immense importance to so many people. And if you were listening to Natasha Devon's show a little earlier, uh, you heard a number of trans persons phoning in to to explain that the court judgment actually doesn't really affect them in a, in a day-to-day position. Um, they're just concerned with living their life as best they can um, and, and managing, like all of us, with all the problems that life throws at you.